second cosmic law. This principle embodies the truth that there is and always was a correspondence between the laws and phenomena of the various planes of being and life. There is not one principle in space that is not somewhere in man. There is no law operating in space which does not operate somewhere also in the compound construction of the human being. This is spoken about in a lot of ancient texts, um, such as the Gnostics, the Hermetics, uh, the Emerald Tablets. It's... This great law was inscribed upon an emerald, and it says, that which is above is like that which is below. That which is superior is like unto that which is inferior. This means that there is a tremendous archetypal sympathy between the universe and the electron. That actually the cell, the atom, each of these is a little world. And the world is the great cell, the great atom that everything actually moves upon one basic key pattern. And who possesses the key to that pattern possesses the key to all knowledge. So all the answers, all the way from the shallow externals of his present ignorance to the deepest profundities of his divine origin, all these things must be within himself. principle of correspondence states that that which is above is similar or like to that which is below. So what this means is the above in this case is the macrocosm, okay? the, the laws of the very large things, okay? the laws that govern the creation which we consider is seemingly outside of ourselves. We know at the deepest level that it's not, that we're one with it. But, you know, we perceive this as out here, the laws that, that are, govern the, the large aspects of things. So the macrocosm, or the very large, the totality of everything, and the microcosm, which is the very small, or the individuated units that comprise the whole in their aggregate, okay? They are reflections of each other. They cannot be separated from each other. As one goes, the other goes. The universe is actually a holographic system. It's a hologram is an image, okay? You pass a, uh, a laser through it and it then projects a 3D image, okay? It's like a flat image and it projects a three-dimensional image. But the aspect, why they call it a hollow, like holistic hologram, holistic image, is if you break a hologram into multiple components by cutting it, if I take a hologram and I cut it in four pieces, you don't have a quarter of the image on one part of the hologram and a quarter on the other and a quarter on the third and a quarter on the fourth. You have four whole images that only lose their resolution by a quarter, okay? So everything is contained in all the smaller parts, okay? That's like the reality that we're living in. Our universe is a holographic one. So the universe is inside the individual. And the entire universe is like an individual. They're reflections of each other. To know the workings of the individual will help lead us to an understanding of the macrocosmic laws. Similarly, to learn the macrocosmic laws will help us to learn the way that consciousness within the individual functions. These two things cannot be separated from each other. And once again, as I said at the, near the beginning, that's what occulted knowledge is. The knowledge of the occult is how the microcosmic world works, which is the individuated consciousness, and how the macrocosmic world works, which is natural law. So the other part of the principle of correspondence is that our reality is also fractal in nature. Now, if you studied fractals, these are self-similar mathematical generated patterns, okay? We see this through things like Fibonacci sequence in mathematics, and this is repeated endlessly throughout nature. 
Okay, so you look at you look at the um, structure of the atom, and it's similar to the structure of the solar system, which is similar to the structure of the galaxy. They work the same way. They look the same. You pull back enough, you'll keep seeing the same pattern repeat. Everybody ever see the movie that was done in, I think, the 1970s or 80s? It's a short, like, 10 minute clip. It's called Powers of Ten. Has anybody ever seen this? Watch this movie, Powers of Ten, and you'll understand what I'm talking about when I say that the universe is fractal in nature. Brilliant movie, it will blow your mind. Real short, 10 minutes long, something like nine or 10 minutes long. They, they basically zoom up into the cosmos to show you how everything is self-similar. Then they zoom down into the cells of a human being and in the atoms that the comprise the hand and, and cells of the hand and show you how everything is similar there. All the way down to the atomic level, okay? And the subatomic level. The universe is both holographic, meaning that the whole is contained in the parts and vice versa, and it is fractal or self-similar across all scales of its existence. This principle embodies the truth that there is and always was a correspondence between the laws and phenomenon of the various planes of being and life. The axiom ran in these words, as above, so below, as within, as without. And the grasping of this principle gives one the means of solving the dark paradox and the hidden secrets of nature. nature. There are planes beyond our knowing. But when we apply the principle of correspondence to them, we are able to understand much that we would otherwise not be able to understand or understand, yet overstand. It can be known and is, and this principle is of universal application and manifestation on the various planes of the material, mental, and spiritual universe. It is universal law. The ancients considered this principle as one of the most important mental instruments by which man is able to pry aside the obstacles which hide from view the unknown. And just as knowledge of the principles of geometry enables man to measure distant suns and their movements, we must realize that the heavens above are within us. So proper knowledge of the principle of correspondence gives us reason to intelligently know the unknown. So within as without. So everything corresponds with everything else. So for example, um, we are 70 to 80% water in our bodies, and so is the planet, 70 to 80% water. And everything corresponds with, with everything else. It's quite a simple law. There is a reason that we are basically being used as food from a parasitical force. If that is because we are using other sentient beings as our food, the animals on this planet are being treated horrifically, horrifically. Now I know this isn't going to be popular, um, but to be honest with you, you know, if we're serious about solutions and we understand these universal laws like we say we do, then surely, you know, we have to try and be living by them to, 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 to change this reality that we're experiencing. I mean, we are enslaving, torturing and murdering over 56 billion land animals a year. In other words, our practices toward animals are affecting the field of consciousness, the interconnected field of energy in which we all are living. We're not separate from that vibratory energetic field. And whether we're conscious of it or unconscious of it, it is having an effect upon our wellness, upon our well-being, and ultimately upon the conditions that we are living with, that we are living in, that are affecting us every day on a day-to-day -day basis. I think this is so important to understand, this law of correspondence. All the whilst there are slaughterhouses, there will be battlefields. And I'll add human suffering and slavery to them. Because of the law of correspondence, as above, so below, authoritarianism and carnisms are linked. We cannot expect to be free 
or free from suffering, all the whilst we support the enslavement and suffering of other beings. It's really critical that anarchists and vegans and everybody understands this. And we need to look at this law of correspondence and how that ties in with natural law cause no harm to other living beings. Well, if we can't even start with our plate, you know, what chance have we got for freeing ourselves? So, the law of correspondence, as above, so below, is working perfectly here, you know? What we're doing to animals is being done to us. We're being used as food. They're, 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 they're taking our fear energy, or however these, these uh, parasites do it, uh, all going in the morphic field and these controllers are, are consuming the fear energy, energy of um, the animals as well. The morphogenic field is poison. The field of consciousness and energy that we all live in is poisoned as a result of this practice of carnism. Look at the images and ask yourself the question, what is this practice doing energetically to the field of consciousness in which we are all living? But we need to understand the self-inflicted effects through the laws of correspondence, the higher laws of nature, the laws that ultimately govern the consequences of our behavior. And that is what the law of correspondence dictates, that as we do, so shall be done unto us. So if you want to be free, you have to allow other beings to be free. As long as you enslave and consume other beings, you will be enslaved and consumed. That is the law of creation. You just don't want to acknowledge it. You just don't want to admit that's how it is. You don't want to admit that that's the reason why you're in the prison that you're in. Though all the inhabitants may not be directly conscious of it and recognize it, they may be sure that they are suffering from it unconsciously and that the terrible vibration of horror and fear and injustice is acting upon every one of them, even though they do not know it. So we are contributing to our own enslavement because not only are we working against natural law, universal law, and that's affecting the law of correspondence. What will be done to you will be done to others. It's so simple. Universe doesn't make it difficult. Understand the laws of correspondence and causality. This is affecting the entire morphic field of consciousness that we are a part of. You engage in these practices, they do not stay where they are at. And just because you try to hide them and erect huge walls and fences, that doesn't mean that that energy isn't going beyond that area just because people aren't seeing it. And when the earth, the water, the atmosphere is corrupted, then it will create its own reaction. Are we not supposed to be evolving here? You know, I thought we were in a time of awakening where, you know, we're looking at our behaviors and looking at what's causing this. The man who changes himself on the side of evolution realizes the wickedness of destroying life. The my freedom movement doesn't want to acknowledge that. It wants to say, I can have things both ways. I can still be a dominator. I can still be involved in the process of murder and, and domination over other beings. And somehow, magically, I can still have my freedom bestowed upon me. And it doesn't work that way, ladies and gentlemen. That which, that which we that which do at an individual, at an individual scale, scale will become scale, our, our aggregate quality, quality of behavior at a larger a scale larger and will scale become scale, our, our macroscopic experience. experience. That's the law of correspondence. Don't take what you don't own. It's not your life to take from that animal. It is their life. They own their life. That is their right. We're creating this prison for ourselves by our attachments to false belief systems. 
That attachment is what is going to keep us in that position. We break those false belief systems, we can step out of that chain. Again, this never-ending chain is all about the chain of obedience and attachment to falsity, to lies. And that's what it's going to take, that level of will, that level of care, that level of intelligence. You know, how serious are we? If we're really serious about freeing ourselves, surely we, we need to set the example by freeing others. I'm just going to finish uh, on, on a quote from Gary Francione, and he says, and this really sums it up perfectly, we will never have peace on earth as long as we have suffering and death on our tables. And that's the law of correspondence. So over to, over to you, you know, we either, we either live by it or, or we're not really that serious and we carry on. Carry on. Carry on. There's only two mistakes you can make on the road to truth and freedom. Not starting and not going all the way. You haven't ended up a vegan anarchist, you haven't gone all the way yet. And truth, truth is belligerent in nature, especially in this day and age, because it goes against government, religion, mind control, society itself, society itself, society itself, society itself, society itself. It is about time for us to begin to clean up our planet and ourselves. This little planet is being burdened with much more difficulty than any honorable planet in the solar system can take care of. We look around us and we see six billion people breaking natural laws. Natural laws.